right, hey, what's up, y'all? This is Paul C. Tierina, nutritional therapist, lifestyle and performance coach with the SHT. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Remember, we are here to help. We are here to heal. We are here to clarify the confusion and bring confidence to the people that we work with on all health topics because there's so much information out there and misinformation. So please make sure that you follow, subscribe. If you find this information useful, like, share it with people that you care about, and please send us your comments and questions because that's where a lot of this information comes from. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the important roles of macronutrients inside the body. And when I say macronutrients, we're talking about big picture stuff like the meats and proteins, the fatty acids that come from traditional fats, um, and then plant matter and carbohydrates. All right, we could get a little bit more granular. Maybe we'll do that at some point in the future where we talk about vitamins and minerals and cofactors and other nutrients, but I think for us to understand what food is doing for us so that we can have confidence in what we're doing in eating real food, talking about macronutrients makes a lot of sense. Now remember, our focus when eating real food is we're eating for nutrients and nutrient density to contribute to the structure and form and function of the body. And then we're also eating in a way that nurtures self-sufficiency, which is the body's own self-reliance, ability to make its own energy, metabolic flexibility, and ideally fat burning. So today we're going to talk more about the nutrient piece. All right, so let's talk about the important roles of fat inside the body. Most people, when they think about fat, they think about clogged arteries, excess calories, and excess body fat. But we know as real foodies that fatty acids and fats play so many beneficial roles inside the body. Number one, we are trying to train the body how to use fat for fuel. So one of the easiest ways to do that is to eat traditional beneficial dietary sources of fat, including the fats contained in real food. And if I do that, and I'm kind of starving my body of the carbohydrates most part of the day, then my body is learning how to use dietary fat for fuel. And that means that in between my meals, in the space in between meals, it's an easy switch for my body to start to use my excess body fat for fuel. All right, fatty acids also contribute to a lot of the structure inside my body. So obviously my excess body fat, but then also my skin, my muscles, my interstitial connective tissues. I have cushions around my organs, my organ systems, and my bones and joints. And so a lot of this structure depends on specific fatty acids. Even at the cellular level, my cell membranes are made up with what is known as a phospholipid or bilipid layer, which basically is a fatty acid layer. And so the structure of this body and the structure of my cells depends on me eating specific fatty acids. Fatty acids are also required for the absorption of fat-soluble nutrients. Fat-soluble nutrients are things like vitamin A, D, E, and K, and all their different derivatives. All right, so fat-soluble means that I need the presence of fat in order to assimilate these nutrients. And if I don't eat fat with my main meals and my snacks, then I'm not absorbing the fat-soluble nutrients contained in those foods. All right, so we recommend eating healthy fats with everything that you eat to, to ensure that you're assimilating these all-important fat-soluble nutrients. Fatty acids are also required for the proper stimulation of the gallbladder. So every time I eat healthy fats and that enters my small intestine, that signals to my gallbladder to squeeze and squirt this thing called bile into my small intestine, which helps me break up my fats. You can think of bile as like Dawn dishwashing liquid. It will break up the fats and make them easier to digest. But what's interesting about that is the gallbladder sits right by the liver. The liver is constantly filtering toxins out of the body and then putting them into the gallbladder. The gallbladder uses those toxins to create bile. And so every time I squirt to digest fats, I'm also excreting a lot of the uh, toxins that my liver is filtering out of the system. Um, so detoxification depends on healthy fats. Emulsification of fats to digest them properly depends on eating fats. And then I'm keeping my gallbladder active, which is a really good thing. If I don't keep my gallbladder active, that leads to calcification and stasis, all right? Um, also, eating healthy fats with all our main meals, including our desserts, helps to minimize the impact on blood sugar levels of the foods that I'm eating. So if I have something that's dessert-based, like an ice cream, if that ice cream is made with um, heavy cream and a little bit of egg yolks, I'm minimizing the impact on my blood sugar levels. Or if I'm having something sweet in general, some fruit, having some fruit with some cream or coconut oil is actually gonna minimize the impact on my blood sugar levels. Um, and then certain fatty acids are required for the anti-inflammatory pathways. So my body's ability to anti-inflame depends on specific fatty acids. So when I eat healthy fats, it is not just about excess body fat and excess energy. There's a little bit of that going on. We do want the body to use healthy fats for fuel, 
but then there's all these beneficial roles from eating traditional and healthy fats and the fats contained in real food. Now, the best sources for fat are going to be real food, and then you know there's a few little hacks and supplements we recommend, such as the wild salmon roe or the uh, virgin cod liver oils. Um, but we do recommend being aware of the protection of the saturated fat versus mono and poly. And so we have some really good resources that outline that info. So remember, the body is made of nutrients, and one of those macronutrients is healthy fats and fatty acids. All right, so let's talk about the important roles of meat and protein inside the body. Most people, when they think about protein, they think about muscle. But we know that proteins and amino acids play so many more important beneficial roles inside the body. So our bodies, again, the structure is made up of protein and fats, right? When my body digests proteins, it breaks it down into amino acids, and those amino acids can be reassembled into over 50,000 different proteins, all right? So definitely contributing to the structure of the body in obvious places like my muscle and heart, but then also things not so obvious like my connective tissue and my tendons and ligaments and my bones and joints. So my structure depends on specific proteins and amino acids, and then enzymes, which are the catalyst and managers for all kinds of different metabolic and biochemical processes inside the body are built up of amino acids. Antibodies, my ability to have a strong immune system and my ability to fight infection depends on specific amino acids. Hemoglobin, which transports oxygen throughout the body, is a specific protein made up of specific amino acids. And then a lot of my hormones depend on specific amino acids to be formed properly. My neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters are what help um, communication between cells, definitely in the brain, but neurotransmitters bathe the entire body because neurotransmitters are what contributes to intracellular communication, intersystem communication, and those are amino acids. And then of course we mentioned before, the muscle and heart is made up of proteins and amino acids, and then RNA and DNA require amino acids for proper regulation, which means my genetic function and my epigenetic function depends on specific amino acids. And so what we're trying to say here is that eating animal meats and eating healthy proteins contribute to a lot of different functions inside the body. And if I am meat or protein phobic for some reason, I am missing out on a lot of these benefits inside the body. All right, and remember, we've said it many times, the body is made of nutrients and a big part of those nutrients is meats and proteins and amino acids and all the things that contribute to this amazing body and the structure of this body. Now the best sources of protein and meats are going to be just basically trying to vary your nutrient spectrum by eating different types of meats over time. So in most of our handouts and guides and literature that we give out again in our progressions and courses, like we recommend getting a broad spectrum of nutrients. One of the most beneficial documents we put together is our animal foods and superfoods checklist where we actually give you a list of things to consider when rotating through these different foods just so that you're getting some variety over time. We do think it's more important in the beginning just to get real food right and just to get our macro structuring right, the way that we recommend, you know, uh, no carbohydrates in the morning, carbohydrates in the evening, and space in between meals. And so if you're eating the same thing every day just to make that work in the beginning, that's perfectly fine. But over time, it's ideal to start to rotate through different types of animal meats, right? So we always recommend fatty cuts, bone in and skin on, and then trying to get animal meats from different animal sources, including chicken and poultry and be uh, beef and pork and seafood and fish and shellfish. All right, if you're doing that over time and you're trying to vary that up over time, you're getting a broad spectrum of different nutrients for the body to use and break down into these amino acids that play all these really important roles inside the body. All right, and then let's talk a little bit about the roles of plant matter inside the body. So plant matter has some nutritional value. It's not as nutrient dense as the animal meats and traditional fats, but in plant matter, we get unique nutrient profiles. So we do get a lot of the water soluble vitamins like vitamin C and the B vitamins. We also get some bioavailable minerals, bioflavonoids, enzymes, fiber in the context of these different plant sources, phytonutrients, carotenoids, and all these play unique beneficial roles inside the body. We'd also say that plant matter is extremely beneficial because it can be detoxifying. Right? The best sources for plant matter are going to be local farmers markets where you know and trust and understand where the food is coming from. The next best way to get quality produce is just going to be looking for the organic label. And then we always recommend that people cross-reference 
the EWGs or EWG.org's Dirty Dozen Clean 15 list that they come out with every year, which basically tells you which produce to get organic because that produce is so dirty and laden with pesticides and herbicides, and which produce that you can afford to get conventional because they tend to be relatively clean. All right, and then finally, let's talk about the roles of carbohydrates inside the body. And remember, when we say carbs, we're talking about dominant sources of starch and sugar, which get broken down into primarily glucose. All right, so the primary use of glucose inside the body is for energy. Every cell in the body can use glucose for energy. And my body, when I consume glucose or when I consume starch and sugar and break that down into glucose, my body and my cells are going to either use it immediately for energy, but there's only so much that we can use at a time. The rest of it gets stored in the form of glycogen in muscles, which is the storage form of glucose, which is why it's similar spelled glycogen. Um, it's the storage form of glucose in muscles, which means that my body can access that easily for an emergency situation, but there's only so much storage space that I have inside my muscles, so then my body's going to convert excess glucose over time to excess body fat. And the reality is that there is not a dietary requirement for eating carbohydrates or for eating glucose or starch or sugar because my body can actually make glucose in the liver through a process called gluconeogenesis. So if I go through periods of time where I don't consume any carbohydrates at all, I'll be perfectly fine because my body can create glucose. And the reason I like to point that out is sometimes we do recommend that people go either low carb or lower carb ish, or maybe you can go through periods without consuming any carbohydrates at all. And that's perfectly safe because the body can create glucose through a process called gluconeogenesis. We don't recommend people do that for the long term, but it is a good experiment to bounce in and out of. And again, best sources for carbohydrates are basically going to be real food sources. And we have all this information lined out in all the literature that we hand out. So what do we need to know going forward? What's going to help us as real foodies? Just understanding these important roles of macronutrients, because then it gives me confidence that when I'm eating real food, such as traditional fats and animal meats and nutrient dense produce, that's contributing to a lot of beneficial things inside the body. And when I'm eating dominant sources of starch and sugar, the main thing my body is able to do with those things is either use it for energy or store it as energy. And that doesn't mean that we need to avoid carbohydrates. We just need to understand that carbohydrates are the biggest problem for most people, including people in the SHT community, which is why we have our basic rules around them. All right? If we can follow those basic rules, which is no carbs first part of the day, a little bit of carbs at night from real food sources in moderated amounts, then we're getting the benefits of all worlds. We're getting the benefits of having some of those carbohydrate foods, and we're also getting the benefits of the nutrients that are contained in those carbohydrate foods, but we're also minimizing the impact of the carbohydrates on the body by moderating the amounts and making sure they're from real food sources. And then understanding carbohydrates in the context of our way of eating is not a problem because real food carbohydrates, again, moderated, is extremely helpful over time. The challenge is just making sure that we follow those rules. All right. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Remember, we are on a mission to empower the planet with our unique message. So the best thing that you can do to support us is just take this information, put it into practice, and be a living example for other people to follow. If you find this information useful, we'd also love it if you shared it with people that you cared about. And if you want to take your support a step further, a little really does go a long ways. You can visit EmpowerThePlanet.com where we have different ways that you can contribute. All right. Thank you so much.